turn with me if you would to Joel chapter 2. There was a lot of things going on at the time that Joel prophesied uh, what he did here in chapter 2. There was, uh, if you go back and read the Bible, read, read the whole book of Joel, you'll find that there was a lot of impending doom. There was a lot of judgment that Joel was talking about. And then he kind of gets here to a point in, uh, in his prophecy where the sun breaks through the clouds. And I love that song that we just sang, uh, Wash All My Sins Away. Because that's, that's kind of where this all sums up and comes together. Uh, yesterday I had a sermon prepared for you and then God reminded me that he had one. Uh, so, so that's where we're going this morning and I'm excited about it. But we're going to look at Joel chapter 2 this morning. Uh, if we went back to verse 6 here uh, in chapter 2, we find that these the people at, at this time were much pained. There was a lot going on. There was uh, uh, a lot of uh, pain in their life. They had come, and, and, and then comes this comforting word. And, I, the, and here's the wonderful thing about this word that Joel spoke here, is the word that he told them during their pain and during their hard time is the, that word has never lost one iota of its meaning. It has never lost one ounce of its power. It still exists today, the same as it did way back whenever God's people needed deliverance from the hand of the Egyptians. It's the same word and it has the same amount of power that it did in Psalms 51 when David was falling on his face before God. It's the same word. It's the, it's the same word of encouragement that Elijah had when he sat down and the brook had dried up and he was going to even take his own life. When David was sitting in the mouth of the cave and he didn't know what he was going to do and there was impending gloom, it had the same power. Then it has the same power as it did when Peter went off and denied Christ and the disciples ran from him and he came back and said, do you love him? Let me tell you something, folks. The bedrock of the gospel is that you shall be delivered. That God's love in the midst of our sin and loves us greatest. You know, I think sometimes we have to go back and preachers and even myself are, are constantly we're trying to trying to, to, to get people to draw closer, to be uh, more sacrificial, to be um, to exercise more spiritual disciplines in, in coming close to the Lord. And if the fact that God does not deliver us in our most desperate times, in our most desperate moments, does not motivate us to be closest to Him, then I don't know what does. And these people here were desperate. And as all the darkness was, was glooming over them, I want you to look in verse 30 and, uh, through verse 32 here in chapter 2. I'm not going to read a whole lot of it, but I'm going to read a small portion. And we're going to go from there. And he says this. He says, I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone, did you hear that? Everyone, everybody say that with me. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the survivors whom the Lord called. There will be deliverance for those of us, those who call upon the name of the Lord. In the worst times, in the worst times that could ever happen, salvation is available. When day turns to night and all seems gloomy, this word always shines true. There still remains God. I don't care what you go through. I don't care how bad it is. You know, and I spoke to my Sunday school class this morning. We talked about reaping and sowing. And I'm so glad that God has seen favor upon me that I didn't always reap the full benefit of what I've sowed. Ain't you? You know, I'm thankful for that. But here's what I do know, that sometimes in our life there have been sins and there have been seeds that we've sown even in before we were Christians that sometimes we still reap from, don't we? We still look at that and it's still a cloud over our life. And you know what? That may exist. But God wants to be there with us during that darkest time, just like He was with Paul whenever he had a thorn in the flesh and he said, my grace is sufficient. I want you to remember that because I feel like so many people I talk to are over the cloud of their own sinful life. There's still things there that they reap from what they sow. You know, the prophet said, if you sow to the wind, you'll reap the whirlwind. And sometimes we 
reap that whirlwind. Even after we give our heart to Christ and even though we become Christians, it's still prevalent that we seem to still be doing that. But I want you to understand something. God's grace is sufficient and He will deliver us. You know, it may not be gone, and that still may be that, but God will deliver us. God wants to save us from that. The words of, 30, of, 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 the, of Joel, chapter 2, verse 32, will always shine between the clouds, folks. He will, God is a delivering God. He is a saving God. He's a merciful God. And these present times, not just then, are times that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? That from the beginning all the way back to all the way to the end of times. You know, whenever in the book of Acts in chapter 2, verse 16, 17, if you go back there and look, when Peter got up with the eleven and he began to address the clouds, you know where he went to? He went right here to Joel chapter 2. He said, here's what Joel prophesied, that you shall be saved and you will be delivered if you call upon the name of the Lord. The same thing that Joel was proclaiming is what Peter was proclaiming and it's what I'm proclaiming. And up until the Lord returns, we will be proclaiming that you shall be delivered. Folks, if you're in a captive situation, if you're in a situation where sin blooms over your head and there's a lack of forgiveness and there's a lack of bitterness, I pray that in your dark time and the clouds that are falling over you, that you'll see this ray of sunshine through them clouds. And that is that God wants to hold our hand. God wants to love us. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. God has never stopped being that kind of God. He wants us calling on Him, placing our trust and our faith in Him in order that He might deliver us. His verse will never lose its power. The blood will never lose its power. God undoing man's ruin that he brought upon himself. That's what it is. Delivering us from the ruin that we've caused. Delivering us from what we have sown. That's what it's all about. Delivering us from what we have sown. And let me tell you something that we all have in common about this sermon. There's one thing about what Joel says and what Peter followed up with when he repeated Joel chapter 2 on over there in Acts chapter 2. There's one thing about it. There ain't a soul in here that don't need it. There's not a soul in here that don't need to hear it. There's not a soul in here that, should, that, that, that doesn't need to call upon the name of the Lord. As long as there's people on the face of this earth, we're going to need whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Our world is sick and dying, and it's like a ship without a sail a lot of times. There are people that, 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 that have gloom and doom. There's people that, 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 that focus on the economy. There's people that don't have that don't have uh, that don't have work. There's people that don't know how to feed their families. There's people that are, are in the desperate of situations and times. And let me tell you something. When we get to those points, even before we get to those points, this word is still true. And this word is still powerful. And I don't care what position you are in life, God says, whosoever call upon me shall be delivered. God must be the one to bring deliverance when there's no hope. I deal with people a lot of times that they think that there's no hope in the world. They think that all is lost and this is the worst situation that I've, that, that, that I've ever been in. And I'm constantly telling people there is something worse than what you're going through. There's something worse. Sometimes what we think is the worst is actually the best because if it brings us to the point to where we say, Father, I'm calling up on you because you said whosoever calls upon your name shall be delivered, then it's worth every bit of your pain. It's worth every bit of your loss. It's worth every bit of your suffering. It's worth every bit of your sacrifice. If it brings you the point that you call upon the name of the Lord, be thankful for the circumstances that you've landed in. Amen. I thank God for the circumstances that when I was young, I seen as terrible. I seen them as bad. I seen them as the worst. But now I see them as the best because it brought me to a place where I was able to hear the gospel. It brought me to the place that I had to see some sun through the dark clouds. And that was the place that I called upon the name of the Lord and He delivered me. I thank God for that. And we need to thank God for that. In any kind of present trouble, in any kind of distress right now, He is available. I like what Psalms chapter 50 verse 15 says. It says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify who? Me. Glorify me. 
I can't help but let a little of my sermon I was going to preach leak into this sermon. You know, we always look over that Romans 8, 28 as Christians a lot of times. And we say, you know, for we know that all things work together for good of those that love God to those who are called according to His purpose. What is His purpose? We are called according to His purpose. Our purpose, folks, is to look at those circumstances and to look at our situation and to look at what we're going through and understand this. That who are called according to His purpose. His purpose for me is in verse 29. And that purpose is, is to glorify God and be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. What did Psalm chapter 50 verse 15 say? You see, that must have been what, the, what, what Paul was thinking when he was over there writing Romans, just like Peter was thinking to Joel chapter 2 right here. Whenever he thought about that, he says, you know what? I remember what David wrote in Psalms 50 verse 15 when he said, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Your responsibility, you've been bought with a price. When you've seen the sun shine through the dark clouds, when God showed up in your time of need and you called on Him and He delivered you, it was not for your glory. You know what? God didn't call you to be healthy. God didn't save you to be wealthy. God didn't save you to be happy. God called you to glorify Him in the times of your unhealthiness, in the time of your unhappiness, in the time of your unwealthiness. God called you because you know what? It's in those times that the sun shines through. And we see that God is our great deliverer. You know, sometimes we look at, at too many other things to bring sunshine to the dark clouds, don't we? Sometimes we're looking at relationship to bring us through the dark cloud. Sometimes we're looking for money to bring us through the dark cloud. Sometimes we're looking for something material to bring us through the dark cloud. The preacher can't bring you through the dark cloud. But there's one way of sunshine that will always be through. And that's when my hope and trust is in God. Because it said that hope is an anchor to my soul. You see, I have a hope. Because God has promised me that all things will work together for those that love God to those who are called according to His purpose. I believe that. I trust in it. And I'm living testimony of it. And I thank God for that. Listen, if there's trouble and you're like a lost child in the woods, stop and cry for the Father. Stop and cry for the Father. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. There is no sweeter story, is there? Man, as I look and peer into people's lives, I see no sweeter story than that of the grace of God. Grace that is greater than all my sin. It's not that I deserve to be delivered. It's not that I can buy into being delivered. It's that by the grace of God, I'm delivered. Folks, what cloud is there over your head? Where are you trying to find deliverance? Where are you trying to find hope? Where are you trying to find help today? God wants us to call upon His name. Psalms 107 says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. No story, sweeter story has ever been told. In present trouble, He wants us to call upon Him. He wants us to call on Him in future trouble. Then you will certainly need deliverance. Then you will need deliverance. He's thinking of the future right there. In the last days, as the need for deliverance increases, salvation will increase. When pains of death cease to o'er my soul, unto the Lord I cried. Remember that song? We love to sing about grace. We love to sing about deliverance. We love to sing about God's goodness. But does my life conform to that goodness? Is my heart conform to that goodness? Is looking to Him where I'm finding my goodness? If you have called upon the name of the Lord, you will be delivered. You see, and here's one of the things that we've been delivered from. There's a moment, and there are moments sometimes in your life that you'd like to go back and just say, recap through them and take them out. There's times and there's places and there's moments and there's situations that we'd like to go back and say, you know, I'd like to take it back. You know, I wish it wasn't there. Folks, you can't take it back. But let me tell you a very pretty story. Let me tell you a fairy tale. Let me tell you a fairy tale that comes true. Is that moment in time when you and I had a death sentence. Because the Bible says the way to sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. You and I had an eternal appointment with death. Sinful death. But let me tell you what, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord reaches down. When we call upon the name of the Lord and we're saved, Jesus came down at the point of the cross 
and just by shedding his blood. And he took a moment for you that you needed him to take, didn't you? You see, you and I need deliverance from that moment. We needed deliverance for sure from that time when we had a death sentence. And Jesus came down and he captured that. Just like you'd like to go back and take a picture out of time. You say, boy, I wish I didn't have to relive that. I wish I didn't have to think about that. I, I wish I could go back and take them words back. And you can't do it. But let me tell you something. There's a time. There's a place. There's a sentence that exists that God came down and he recaptured it through his son, Jesus Christ. He captured that dreadful moment. Whosoever call upon, call upon the name of the Lord. That promise stands firm. Not only is it something that helps us in present trouble, not only is it something that helped us in future trouble, and not only is it something that's helped us with our past trouble, but it's a promise that you and I need to make as a firm foundation in our life. You see, we need to stop calling upon everything and everybody else in the world whenever God is standing there with His arms outstretched and His grace wide open for us to believe in Him and trust in Him. So we need to make that a sure foundation in our lives. Let me tell you something, amidst doctrine, amidst understanding our faith and understanding God's will, understanding this and understanding that. I like what I, I like what scripture said. He says, He says, don't be too tossed to and fro by, by, by so many things. You know, folks, doctrine is important. I believe in that more now than I ever did. I believe that we need to know our foundational truths that we stand on, that we believe in, that dictate the direction of our life. I, I believe that's very, very important. But if the bedrock and the foundation is not in Jesus Christ who delivers us from our sin, then our foundation's on the wrong thing, isn't it? Because without that, the rest of it falls away. You see, without being delivered, God, all through Scripture and all through time, with all these people, this is the message that whosoever calls upon my name, I will deliver you. Let that be the bedrock of what we believe in most and the rest of it will fall into place. I love my salvation. But when I hang my head in darkness and times are gloomy and the clouds are low, I remember if I call upon His name, I shall be delivered. The happiest state of mind in the world is when a lost person takes mercy from the hand of God. Amen. The happiest time in the world, let me repeat that, is when a lost person takes mercy from the hand of God. When he reached down his hand for me, he had to reach way down for me. I was lost and undone without God and His Son when He reached way down for me. I love that song, don't you? Amen. You will always have a need to come back to the ground, to his ground. Back to that bedrock, back to that foundation of our life. We can hang our soul on that promise. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. That prayer is our means of deliverance. It's our, it's, it, it's our means for deliverance. The only way is to make a direct address to God. Listen. Call on his wisdom. What's he say? Why would he tell me to call upon him? Why would he tell me to trust in him? Am I only trusting in him? No. I'm not only trusting in him, I'm trusting in his wisdom. You know, if I head out today and I'm going downtown Nashville, let's just take a Monday. A Sunday's not too bad, but I'm going to tell him going downtown Nashville or, or maybe I'm going to visit a hospital or something, there's something I can do. I can, I can turn on certain radio stations and, and by tuning into those radio stations they'll say you need to watch out at, at I-24 and Trinity Lane. There's, there's an accident down there. Or, you know, you need to take an alternate route. Why, why, we have got GPSs now that'll tell us those traffic jams, don't we? You know, I, I like it. I don't have one yet, but that's my, I, that's my next one. You know, because I want to know. You ever been to Atlanta? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice to know. You don't ever depend on getting anywhere on time. You're going through Atlanta because you never know what happened. I've been the one in the middle of the road at times too. But you know, here, here, here's the thing about it. Why do I call upon the Lord? Because He has a wisdom to know what the head Because Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. You might think you know. You might can speculate. You might can plan. And you might think that you don't know. 
You know what Jesus says? He knows the plan that he has for us. You know what? We need to take what we don't know and call on him with what we do. And that is, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be delivered. Whether your trouble is internal or external, the, la- the everlasting shall of God. Think about that. That's everlasting. You know, there's things I've depended on in the past I can't depend on today. There's things I depended on years ago I, I can't depend on that today. People are gone and, and, and you know, perfect situations I thought I had at the time, they're all gone. There's preachers that, that, that preach to me, that witness to me. Folks, they're gone. And there's some more that's going to be gone. And, and one day I may be gone. And, and there's a lot of things that we always depend on and called on that have been gone. But there's one thing that is not going to be gone that's going to be there for everlasting. And that is whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Isn't that great? I can depend on that. I can take it to the bank. I love it. There's one thing about it. You won't perish forever. You ever notice that? There's a lot of things that break me down in life. There's a lot of things that break me down to my Lord's blessings. There's circumstances that I reap that I sold every bit of it. And only by the grace of God was I delivered from it, haven't you? But I'm going to tell you something about this. There's one thing to always remember. You can never perish when you pray. Isn't that great? You ever notice that? As long as I'm praying, I'm powerful because I'm connected to the power. You know, you don't come in and un- you don't run your vacuum cleaner over the floor without you plugging in. It would just be useless, wouldn't it? You know, if your wife come in, oh, I, I doubt me your wife's come in and catch their husband rolling around the vacuum cleaner, but, you know, uh, nobody but me. But anyway, um, what don't you think about that? How, how does it look for you it's okay, you're slowing it around. There's the plug. You're not putting it in. You're like, what are you doing? You're just rolling it around with the plug. Man, you know what, folks? Me and you have a source that knows us. He knows us, young person, because he created us. He knows our garbage. He knows our junk. He knows everything about us. And his goal is for us to call upon him. You see, God wants to redeem a humanity. Let me tell you a blessing that a lot of us don't feel like. You see, Jesus is the bridegroom. And you are the bride. Y'all had a wedding yesterday. Bless their hearts. God bless them. I pray for them. But you know what? Let me tell you something. God is preparing a gift for His Son. And that's you. The bride of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Those who call upon the name of the Lord. That's so good. There's a lot of times we think, you know what, I've got to prepare myself for salvation. I've got to prepare myself for the mercy of God. That isn't the way it works. I have called upon him, and I will be delivered. You see, we need to pray that God will loosen the chains. You know, whenever it was prophesied that Jesus would come, and that he would set at liberty those that were bruised, you know one thing, he knew that there was going to be the bruised. When he said he came to heal the brokenhearted, he said, there's going to be some broken hearts. When he said that he's going to set the captive free, he knew there's going to be some captives. He knew there's going to be some people with some clouds moving over their head. Look at Isaiah 55, 7. I'm going to close out with that scripture. Isaiah 55, 7, here's what it says. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will. He, he will. You may go to people and not get what you're looking for. You may go to a lot of different things and you won't find what you're looking for. You may go to the doctor and you won't find what you're looking for. But let me tell you something. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God for he will freely pardon. To pardon means to set you free. Whosoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. What cloud is over your head this morning? What's holding you captive? 
What is it that you're seeking everywhere and everybody for that you just can't seem to find it? Would you come this morning and pray for the deliverance? Call on the Lord while he may be found. He wants to deliver you. He wants to present you unto himself. A spotless people. Where are you at this morning? Do you need deliverance? Let's pray, Father. I thank you that when I called upon you, you delivered me. You loved me anyway. Father, as unworthy as I was, right in the middle of reaping what I sowed, Father, you snatched me out by your hand. Father, I thank you that you captured hell. <laughs> Father, that moment in time that we all want to be taken out of the picture, Lord, you came into the picture and you snatched us out by your outstretched hand. Father, I pray if there are anybody here this morning who's not saved, Lord, to have us remember that the only hope is through you, not in anything else. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Father, this same message that was spoken by Joel and spoken by Peter can be spoken today, that whosoever called upon the name of the Lord, Peter says, shall be saved. Jesus' name. What's your name this morning? Would you come?